Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Sunday, Palm Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Uh, today is a Sunday homily uh, for that day. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful to uh, have been able to be with y'all earlier this morning uh, via live stream along with Bishop Fob. Um, great, uh, it's a great job. It was fun um, to do that live uh, this week instead of recorded. Uh, I'm very, very grateful to Father Patrick, who uh, was willing to be in Morgan City uh, to bless the palms and to hear your confessions and to uh, uh, to preside for adoration and benediction. Um, and thank you to Father Patrick, who was able to be in Morgan City uh, physically so that I could be with you virtually um, with Bishop Five from the Palm Sunday Mass. Um, we'll do um, similar things next weekend. I'll be with the Bishop live uh, with you for the Easter Sunday Mass and very grateful to Deacon Larry who will be there uh, at, at Holy Cross for adoration and for, and for benediction. Uh, it's a joy to be with you. It's a joy to see you. And uh, now that I, I'm learning things about live stream, I, I, uh, I, I thought I thought I knew something about live stream because we've been doing these for like six months now. But uh, I'm learning that you're supposed to let it sit for a second to let people know that it's going and to join in before uh, before getting started. So uh, it's good to be with y'all. It was good to be with you earlier. And I'm very grateful to Deacon Larry and to Father Patrick. Um, well, let's get started. I, I, I was very moved this morning as I proclaimed the gospel when I read the words of Jesus from the cross. Uh, the, the words of Jesus in, in, in Hebrew, um, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? There's something about uh, a sacred language. Jesus, when he's on the cross, like he, he cries out, like from the depth of his heart, like from the depth of his soul, his human soul, not in, um, not in, he doesn't, he doesn't use Greek, um, but Matthew, Matthew, uh, the gospel writer, Matthew puts that in Hebrew. Jesus cries out in the depths of his soul, from the depths of his soul, like from this depth of the language of his ancestors, from the depths of the language of his prayer. The Jews have Hebrew, the, the Muslims pray in Aramaic, no matter what their native language is, and, and we Catholics, we, we have Latin. It takes us back, united to each other, and to all of our ancestors who have prayed these prayers before us. We come into Holy Week this week, and we might feel a lot like Jesus. Lord, I don't feel your presence. Lord, I don't know where you are. Eli, Eli. Lama Sabachthani. Lord, I don't feel your presence. Lord, I don't know where you are, but, but you're here. But you're here with me. You've probably heard this before, but I'll just remind you today that Jesus was starting Psalm 22. Let me read, I'd actually like to read to you Psalm 22 today. Because Jesus wasn't just saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was saying the title, the first line of one of the most famous prayers for the Hebrews and for us. <laughs> Jesus was saying the opening line of an important prayer, an important song in the Bible. The Psalms, the book of Psalms in the Bible is like the hymn book of ancient Israel. It's actually the hymn book for Catholics. If you were at Mass watching, praying Mass this morning with Bishop Fab and I, you may have heard that all of the music, it came from the Bible. 
And much of the music, it came actually straight from this book of the Bible, the book of Psalms. And the Jews always would, and we Catholics always ought to pray, to sing, to use these Psalms. And so Jesus, when he cries out from the cross, he's, he's praying the whole of Psalm 22. We can't, we, he can't say all the words out loud because he's dying of suffocation as he gives his life and love for us. But he's praying these words, which I would like to read to you today as we enter into Jesus' passion on this Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion and see if it sounds familiar. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, Lama, Aksabatani. Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Jesus remembers. He remembers the ways in which God is faithful Y'all, I'm often blessed to serve as a spiritual director for, for various people. And, uh, and, and of course, I go to spiritual direction myself regularly. And I, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more convinced that one of the most important jobs of a spiritual director is to remind the directee of what God has done and of where God has been so that the directee can live in that trust and that faith now. And you, I've... In you I have trusted, in you my fathers have trusted, and I connect with them using this ancient language that was passed on to me, and you delivered them. But Lord, here's how I feel right now. I'm going to keep going through Psalm 22. But I am a worm and no man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me and wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Do you remember that from the gospel? Where the leaders, the rulers of the Jews say the exact same thing? This psalm is a prophecy. A prophecy of Jesus who comes to redeem us. Jesus, our Savior. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You kept me safe upon my mother's breast. Upon you was I cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Be not far from me. Jesus continues to cry from God to God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. You know, that's the most important thing that we can do. Anytime that we're suffering or we're hurting or we're angry, or, it's to keep talking to God. Anytime that we're grieving and life is difficult, is to keep talking to God. Don't stop talking to God. Tell God how you feel. Tell God what's going on. Read the scriptures. Whatever you got to do. If you got to yell at God, yell at God. But don't stop talking to God. Many bulls have encompassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like ravening and roaring, roaring lions. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like the potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. Yes, dogs are round about me. A company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, 
my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild oxen. And now listen. Jesus, he knows that the Father will save him. The psalmist who wrote this psalm years and years before in prophecy, perhaps even David the king himself, he knows that God will save him. And so he begins to praise God, even from the storm. He begins to praise God, even from the cross. He begins to praise God, even from the feeling of hurt and of grief and of felt abandonment. I will tell of your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, in the, that, that word is actually in Hebrew, kahal. It's translated ek, ekklesia. It can, it can, uh, it's actually well translated church. In the midst of the church, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you sons of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you sons of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of, of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him. But he has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the, in the great church. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Yes, to him shall all the proud of the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and he who cannot keep himself alive. Prosperity shall serve him. Men shall tear, tell of the Lord to the coming generation and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn that he has wrought it. God has wrought our deliverance. God is saving us. And God is with us today. Let us hold, hold to faith. Let's pray with the words of our ancestors. Pray with the words that God has given us. I invite you maybe to take some time today with Psalm 22. This prophecy of Jesus' passion and the praise of God that he echoes, that echoes down through the ages, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of affliction. And I invite you, as, as I've said before, and as you've heard uh, from, other, from other places, pray a psalm a day. If you haven't started that, take up your Bible and pray Psalm 1 tomorrow. Just read it and sit with silence on the wall, for a little while. And then the next day, pray Psalm 2. And just keep going. And let this holy week, like let the words that God has given us to praise, to praise him, uh, ring out. Let the words that God has given us to glorify him sink into the depths of our souls. Let the words that God has given us to pray to him and to express our joys and our sorrows, our afflictions, and, and our gratitudes to him. And let us enter into this holy week, walking with Jesus, to Jerusalem and setting our face upon the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.